The question that should be asked is, education matters for what? Okay, I always start with outcomes uh, and say, for a birth cohort of children, what do we want as the minimal outcomes for them in terms of our investments? What do we want our investments in children, whether it's through schools or preschool or healthcare or whatever, what do we want it to achieve? Okay, and I think that we want to achieve basically three or four things, okay? We want to invest in children first so that they're safe as children. We don't want them to be abused or neglected, injured by their parents or by others uh, as children. So that's one outcome that we're looking for. The, a, a second outcome that we want for children is that they acquire the skills, both cognitive and behavioral and emotional, that enable them to at least enter adulthood with uh, the abilities to become self-sufficient, to be able to get a job and remain self-sufficient. In order to be self-sufficient, you have to do three things at a minimum. Graduate high school, uh, not get heavily involved in delinquency, and not have a child before age 19. Uh, that virtually everybody who does those three things uh, is self-sufficient as an adult. They don't, they don't live in poverty. The third thing that we would like is self-sufficiency and not being in poverty is kind of a minimal outcome, as is safety. I mean, we obviously want it for everybody, but we want more. And what we really want is for people to be able to earn a living that's an adequate living that might be put them in whatever we call middle class in the United States, it'd be 50 or $60,000, and to be able to have reasonably caring relationships with other people. I mean, those are the two basic things that we want there. Um, and then the question is, if those are the outcomes that we want, safety, self-sufficiency, and ability to earn a, a middle-class income and uh, have caring relationships, what are the things that we need to do in, and where should we make our investments in order to help children get to that point? Investing in education is one component of that. Okay, uh, for safety, education is all off on the side. You need to change the parental behavior, whether it's physical hitting or sexual abuse or leaving children unattended or whatever, and that's not an education issue. It's an education of parent issue, not an education of children issue. The next outcome, which is to become self-sufficient, which requires graduating high school, not becoming a, a teen parent, that while education certainly is important, the critical importance for that is the quality of parenting a child receives between ages zero to five. Because the quality of parenting lays the groundwork for the children to be able to utilize education. And so you have to focus on parents for that group of children, which is about 20% of all children that are born each year who will not graduate high school. For that group, if we want them to be able to graduate high school, we need to focus on the parent as well as do things like provide preschool and have good schools. Uh, then, for those to become middle class, and about 50, uh, about 50 percent of all children born become middle class, 20 percent are poor, and 30 percent are near poor. They're the ones who graduate high school but don't go on to college. In order to become middle class in the country, you have to get a two-year degree at least. Uh, or, or the only other way is if two people that are high school graduates marry each other and stay married. Because uh, then they have two incomes that are low, but they add up to one 
uh, there. But almost everybody who has a low income, even if they get married, doesn't stay married. So uh, it doesn't work. Um, so for that group, the 30% of people who graduate high school but don't get a college degree, um, education's critically important. And that's where it focuses. So for, for the children that are going to be born next year, if they look like the children born previously, about 50% of them will not only graduate high school, they will also graduate college and get a two-year degree. And, um, and they'll do fine, and our existing system actually works OK for them. Their parents and, and, and their schools make them fine. For 30% of the children born next year will uh, graduate high school but not go on to college. And the education system, including preschool, could be improved enormously to get them there. The 20% who drop out of high school, you need both cha major changes in the education system. There are big dropout factories and schools that are not doing well. Discipline policies push a lot of kids out of school. But a lot of those problems are preceded by not having adequate groundwork laid by the parenting they receive when they're zero to five, and that has to change also. But for the 20% where there's also a parenting, most of these parents are very poor. Many of them, not surprisingly, there's, it goes, if the causal thing's not clear, but a lot of the parents are, uh, suffer from depression and from a great deal of stress and anxiety because if you're very poor, those things uh, weigh on you heavily and then and then if you're suffering from uh, depression or from uh, uh, an alcohol or drug problem uh, it's also going to make it harder to get and hold a job so you're going to be very poor and that translates into much less attentive parenting much less cognitive stimulation much less helping the child with self-regulation if you think about the fact that um, you want your child to explore and to be creative. You, you, you know, we think about a two-year-old teaching them to explore their environment and be creative and to problem solving the kinds of things that are thought about as good educational policy. If you yourself uh, are very depressed and struggling to just barely get by on income and having to spend time running between welfare departments and whether you're going to get your food stamps and do everything else, there's not a lot of time to focus on your kids' creativity. I mean, there's not a lot of time to focus on your kids. And uh, what we need is a system of, of, of services, not just individual little services, but a, a system that really works with the parents that helps with both the parenting, but also with the income needs that they have. Combine the two, give them incentives to get engaged in the parenting work. And in that system, I would have it involved with uh, having home visitors who come to the home, help support parents. Uh, and then uh, for, for families that are really struggling, you may need full day childcare from, eight, uh, from birth on that works with the parents. For others, you need programs like Early Head Start or really good, strong early preschool programs that also work with the parents as well as the child. Most of our preschool focuses only on the child. That works when the child, when the parents are functioning pretty well at home, the preschool can add to that, including the cognitive stuff that might be missing at home. But for the, for the parents that are really struggling to, to, <coughs> to work with the child, you need a lot of parent-child interaction. We have a number of programs, including some home visiting, WIC, uh, Women and Infant um, uh, Care, um, Early Head Start, which is a, a pre-preschool. But m most of them only serve a small part of the po eligible population. We have to take those so that, and fully fund them so that they can serve all of the eligible population. Then most of them, uh, uh, many of those programs, 
or have trouble recruiting people, maintaining good staff, there's very high turnover, they don't have much in the way of technical assistance and quality standards. We also, once expanding it to be available to all the uh, people, um, uh, we need to create um, more, edu uh, more ch early child education programs to, edu to, to train people to be in these programs, and then we have to fund the technical assistance and support elements uh, that are necessary to make these programs work. And we have to keep remembering that, especially for poor people, but wealthier people understand this fully. I mean, no program immunizes or inoculates a child, and if you just do that, they're going to be fine. All of these things have to be continuous and build, and I mean, that's what parents with more income are able to do is put their kids through a series uh, of programs and, and build them. They don't have just one thing. Uh, uh, and, uh, it's not like a vaccination. Uh, you need to go to your pediatrician regularly, even after you're vaccinated. Similarly, you have to move from good home visiting to good quality preschool to a good school. Uh, uh, because what we found is if you, you could take the best preschool and if you put it into a highly disorganized kindergarten, it just sets back everything that happened in preschool. It requires trying to do a smaller number of things well. We have a tendency to try and do lots of different things mediocre. Uh, as opposed to say, okay, we're going to have only five programs in this community. They're the core programs and we're going to really deliver them very well. The children who are in the bottom 15% now are the children of the parents who were in the bottom 15% uh, in the previous generation and, that, and, and it goes back a generation beyond that at least. And that we've got a group of uh, uh, families that are not making it and it's been multiple times because they they haven't gotten the range of services and that if we don't make a commitment to them in a big time way we are uh, consigning the bottom 15 to 20 percent of children families to not making it uh, again and that that does break down by income and uh, ethnically and by regions and there is really a moral responsibility uh, that I see as well as a benefit of society to not let the bottom 20% just be left uh, without adequate resources as has been the case up until now.